So you two ready to dig this guy up? Sure thing, boss. Great, so I assume someone rang the special number, right? What number, boss? Oh. You idiots! How many times I gotta tell you? You think getting 20 years for murdering a guy's bad enough? Huh? That's nothing compared to having a local freaking council up your ass! <laughs> at the same time preparing to take on this. Look out, this bell's trouble. 200 kilos of boat. Absolutely frightening. Oh, right into each other. On today's show, we're bringing you all the action from this year's series, some outstanding racing. Let's go right back to the start and all the action from round one here at DY. The racing for this season. the biggest race we have in the Ocean Thunder Pro Surf Boat Series for Ativo, a six-boat final. Dial before you dig, top of screen, Alley 1, right down to Byron Bay Premium Mail in Alley number six. Plenty of waves coming through. Here we go. Oh, oh. get it up, <laughs> get it up. Dial before you dig. Oh, you see the wind holding those waves up. It's fantastic, but uh, what an exciting start that was. And what a great race. All the big guns on track. And I tell you what, there's plenty of tension on the beach and a big crowd building. Sandran Property Group so good in the first round, so good again today. Competing alongside of Ativo and also the Northcott crew. The pure We're now putting them through another lap, lap Richard. What are we doing to oh, them? I tell you what, Bossy, critical that they get a clean run out here. And look at this, Ativo and Pure Blonde, they got through. But look at this. Oh. Dial before you dig. Just, they were a fr fraction out there and they've got clipped. This is really going to rain on their parade. Dial before you dig out the back hasn't given up. Look at this There's wave coming through. There's someone called for a plumber. before you dig are coming in in a hurry. But Pure Blonde have hit the beach in front. They are going to make up for a massive disappointment in round one. Just so impressive, Pure Blonde. Big, powerful crew and really came through in the end. Pure Blonde claim great points. Maximum points from round two. Ativo second. Dial before you dig third. But what a day it has been here. Ativo will lead the series at the halfway mark after round number two. 31 points. Sandran on 26. Byron Bay Premium Mail up to 25. But Pure Blonde making the charge up to 22. Dial before you dig now. Into the top 10 on 16 points. Good days as well for Wahoo Pools and Hogs Breath Cafe. Had a crack at the big money today. And this is just about as good a field as we could put together. And Ativo from Austin Mir from north of Wollongong, the series leaders, off to a great start as always. And won't they be feeling the pressure today? Such a hot field, so many world-class crews here. All these crews looking to take out round three of the Ocean Thunder series. And that's what we like to see, the best crews winning on the day. How good have they been today, the Bull Eye boys? Center one, two, as they've been fantastic. So too, dial before you dig from Maruya. That would be a boil over result if either one of those two boats could win. Yeah, it's been the real story of the day. So many of these improving crews really making their mark today. And just to make it into this final just shows you the quality of some of these crews. Well, we started off today with Howard Christie christening a boat named after him that represents Buggan Beach. And here he is in the final, sweeping the Sandran property group ahead of a T-boat. And they are in front, heading out to the cans. I'll tell you what, Centre 1 2 is, though, the, the Bull Eye crew. You see it to right of screen doing very well. They've been really fast on the run out, actually missing a little bit on the run home, but once again, right up there. All right, well, I think we're going to have just about three boats in a line up to the Cairns. The Victorians just off the pace, but only by a shade at the moment. Penarch Forest Products, you can see the can not that far away. So Bulleye, they round the can there. Atibo, the Sandran Property Group, all together. Dial before you dig behind them. Yes. All right, let's go through the overall standings heading into the final round. The defending champions from Austin Mir on 46 points. Sandran Property Group, Pure Blonde, 
both in with a chance of taking the title today with a big result. Oh, you said it, Fossey. It's all about survival today. It's not just about racing. It's keeping the boat upright. I mean, it's a tough guy sport, but I can tell you, talking to the boys on the beach, there's plenty of nervousness today. Uh, these, uh, these electric pumps on the boat, the uh, bilge pumps, Richard, they are working oh. overtime today as well. Yeah, with the modern day technology on these surf boats. These if you start getting too far ahead of yourself, you've heard it all before, you get ahead of yourself, and next minute you're sitting on the beach watching the rest of the race. Dole, before you dig, take you on a bit of water there. So that situation going in today as we work our way through the heats. And Sandran Property Group back to fourth. Wahoo Pools, good improvement today to slip into the top ten. Dial before you dig, how can I help you? Yeah, I'll tell you how I can help me. I'm digging a hole, see? I want to make sure there ain't no cables down there. It's about six feet long and three feet deep. Sure. And, and where are you digging? Hey, 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 who wants to know? Well, I, I need to know to check if there are cables. What, are you wearing a wire? I ain't telling you nothing. Um... Whatever you're digging for, find out what's down there first. Call Dial Before You Dig on 1100. The safety message brought to you by Energy Australia. Kumo Australian Saloon Car Series from Oran Park Raceway. No and worries, he'll live to fight another day. Oh, sideways. He's got the dial before you dig on speed dial, just waiting to call <laughs> that. Very sideways and keeps it off that concrete wall. As we go on board with Ian Chivis. Now, if that name sounds familiar... Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's because he's a, a stalwart of the Formula V category and uh, has uh, category managed and raced in Formula V racing for quite some time, continues to do so. Who Having cares? a guest drive this weekend. He's got a great looking helmet, that's what I like. See and the stars down the side of that thing? Oh, I was watching. Starting to dial himself back in. Right behind him was Brownie. We go back on board with Shivers. Now look at the helmet. Looks like it's out of the movie Top Gun. Looks very cool. Missed a gear pretty badly there, I think. Missing all sorts of gears. The IJC plumbing car has issues. No one is going to run this bloke down. He's on the gas. Yeah, missed the last round, and, and the championship, I think, was worse for it because he's a very good competitor. Oh, he's gone! Oh, what a place to have it off. <laughs> he's off the racetrack. Wow. That was uh, getting busier and busier every day for Shivo, isn't it? I need more political skills than K-Rod to get out of that, <laughs> Wait, oh. Well, so. disappointing for him. It's uh, been that kind of a race for Shivo, unfortunately. So run down this long straightaway, getting towards the business end of this first of two races for us. Uh-oh, Shivo's in trouble again. Man, he's busy. He's working hard. I'm slightly worried about the wheel alignment on this uh, dial 1100 before you dig Falcon because when he drives in a straight line, there's probably, what, 30 degrees of lock on the wheel? As Ian Shivers has been a busy cat so far in this race. He's been in everything. Let's meet him, shall we? A quick learning curve for me. This is my first time in saloon cars. Um, from a back wheel, over wheel background, it's sort of uh, been um, a big learning curve for something that's a little bit different. And uh, look, I'm having good fun and enjoying it. And uh, camaraderie with this group of guys is great. And uh, and I'd just like to thank, you know, Dal Before You Dig team for giving me the opportunity to, to have a, be part of their teams. I think I just want to enjoy my motorsport and I wasn't enjoying my motorsport. Um, I just needed a change and, and that's where it was all, all came to. And uh, I wanted to do something different and uh, I had a go with this, and, and I think this is great. It's just, it's just good fun. And it's going to be a tough start for you from the rear of the grid, effectively. Oh, very hard, very hard. I'm still finding it a bit hard coming to terms with this thing, but uh, look, I'm, I'm happy, confident, and uh, we'll just sort of keep it together. We'll try a few other things, and by the time we get used to the, the way these cars are set up, I sort of be happy and a bit more competitive. So it's just got a big learning curve at the moment. Do you at least rate yourself a chance to make up a few spots on the grid here? I hope so. I hope so. I'll be positive, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Still, as I said, look, if I, once I learn what this thing's doing and then I can take those little bit of a chance and try and come up the grid a bit further, it'd be great, you know. Oh, look at Jeff Brown right on the back of Peter Dane. So the Rogers car, well, it got all out of shape. Let's have a look again at what might have caused that. Looking well, towards the back. He just grabbed the front brake and locked the rears, I think, as well. And he round he goes, oh. and lucky he didn't end up in a uh, dial before you dig sandwich there. Could have been a dial before you spin. Here's a look at it from all Shivers' point of view. He goes, uh-oh. He's had enough problems this weekend. You don't reckon the pucker factor might oh, have been a little I, high there for Shivo? I think it was there, there's no <laughs> doubt. Now, over the top of the bridge, we fly. You're watching the Kumo Australian Saloon Car Series, all part of the Shannon's Nationals. This is, oh my goodness! 
Or as Luke West would say, oh my giddy aunt. I thought that thing was going to roll over. That's Kelland, who's had a collision with Paul Tanisi. Wait to see the replay for that. That was... Well, we're about to go racing in just a moment, folks. We had a bit of an incident before the break. This is Ian Shivers we're on board with him. They start to pick up the pace as the safety car leaves the circuit. Back on board with Chivo. Oh, understeer or was it him being passed up? Oh, it was him oh! being passed up. He's at lock, gets it crossed up. Held on to it. Well done. Now, and uh, who knows, maybe they'll continue the great work that Dad has been doing in this category. We're going on board once again with Shivo because he's just good entertainment value. Wow, Dane, uh, no, not Dane, it was Gates, unfortunately. You can see Shiva just missed the gate. He went into the well, Mark Primer, this has been one of the dial before your dick team members for quite some time now. And he plays an important role in this series each time they enter. Very professional team. Uh, this season we've uh, attended most events and gone pretty well when we've been there. We had to miss a few due to work commitments, but which has affected us in the championship. But other than that, we've been having a good time and haven't wrecked a thing this year, which is good. Uh, considering it's our last event ever here, it's been a... It feels a bit different actually. I've come here probably for the last 15 years and always had good times and sorry to see it go actually. Yeah, a bit of emotion out there on the track do you think even? Oh yes it is actually and the HA will be coming in now, cool down laps, the, all the flaggies are all giving us a wave and thinking we're never going to wave to that guy again. Oh, I'm going to get a bit sad. Yeah, so am I. He actually sounded like he was a fair bit emotional just then even talking about it so that's... That's indicative of what this place has meant to so many different people. It doesn't matter whether you drive a, you know, a production car or a saloon car or a, a V8 supercar. It matters not. This historic time for the saloon car series and for John Goodacre. Well done to him. 16 guys charging very hard. Dial before you dig. How can I help you? Arr, I'm about to dig a hole and I want to check there are no cables down there. Arr. Sure. Whereabouts are you? I'm standing on a giant X on a desert island. You're going to need to be more exact. Mm. Well, I'm in Dead Man's Cove on Skull Island. But if I see you around here, you'll be walking the plank. Whatever you're digging for, find out what's down there first. Call Dial Before You Dig on 1100. The safety message brought to you by Energy Australia. PCAR at Wynyard in central Sydney is chaotic on any weekday. But on the morning of September 16th, it was especially so. Overnight, major Telstra cables had been cut in York Street and an emergency repair operation by Telstra had begun amidst thousands of buses and cars and swarms of city workers. This particular damage has happened as a result of not properly locating the Telstra assets. This cable cut was the CBD's worst and it emphasised once again the importance of dial before you dig, the independent service that provides maps of underground services meant to prevent this sort of disaster happening. Before you dig, how can they help you? Hey, look, uh, I'm, I'm digging a tunnel with a teaspoon and I, I just want to make sure I'm not going to hit any cables. Okay. Where are you digging this tunnel? Uh, it's kind of out near the prison, sort of from H Block to the adjacent woods. Mm -hmm. Whatever you're digging for, find out what's down there first. Call Dial Before You Dig on 1100. The safety message brought to you by Energy Australia. 